We want to talk no-till now with Jason Warren, our soil and water conservation extension specialist. And Jason, you have some research set up. Sort of tell us how you've got things organized and what this line right here means between these two plots. All uh, right. Well, we've been blessed by uh, some of my predecessor started this uh, study in 2006. And so on my left, we've got a plot here that has not been tilled since 2006. And then over here, we have a tillage treatment that's been tilled during that time. And then this field would have been cultivated prior to the establishment of these no-till plots. So it's been raining the past few days or a couple of weeks, and you were able to observe some things with the soil. Tell yeah. us what you've found and what the differences are between these two plots here. Yeah, it's really nice to have this rain and to be able to see some of the benefits here at the field day today of no-till versus conventional. Uh, one of the things we see is a difference in this near surface soil condition that is a result of the really the hydrology of this no-till soil. And so it's got improved structure, it's got better infiltration and uh, good surface residue cover. Whereas this, you know, it's more like mud. Right, yeah. so give us an example. The sheen on the surface, you know, and it, that's indicating that this is at least had some level of, of free water sitting on it for a little bit. Maybe not more than a few hours, but during the rainfall event, this surface was wet, as in having water sitting on it. And then when you, when you feel it and look at it, it's sticking to my hands. I mean, this is mud. And, and that's all fine, you know, when we cultivate our soils, we can, we can, um, create divots on this nearly level land those divots will hold water and then it'll slowly infiltrate but one of the challenges with that which we don't have today because it's a beautiful cool day we've got a full canopy of wheat here but that water on the surface is more apt to be evaporated if we did not have this wheat here say if it were in the fall and this same soil conditions was found that water is more available to be lost to the atmosphere because it's not in the ground. It's just kind of sitting on the surface in the top few, few inches of, of, of soil. And then compare that to, this is the underneath side of the no-till soil. And so it's moist and we, the crop is gonna be off to the races as far as taking moisture and the availability of moisture. But that water it's not, it's not as if we got less rain three feet away. It is the fact that the water that hit this soil that I'm holding went down into the ground instead of being perched on the surface and, as mud. And the benefit of that is it's now protected from evaporation. The crop can still get it because the crop still got roots two, two, three, four feet deep, but now it's protected from the evaporation that it can occur. So that's one of the benefits of, of no-till. And the way that happens is you've got all this nice residue on the surface and you're starting to see some nice uh, granular structure development. See how all that just falls apart in my hand? It's got that moss and everything growing on the surface. That's a nice, stable soil system in contrast to the mud. And again, we can easily grow crops in that, but the hydrology of it's a lot different. And you know, if we get another rain, which one of these do you think is going to have runoff that's going to go into the stream? Right, this one. Th this one here. We've all been talking about the rain. Say we get two inches of rain, how does it benefit the soil profile in the conventional till versus no till? Well, the thing about it is, is again, in this tilled environment, we're gonna, that soil surface is gonna crust over and effectively seal up. So we're gonna depend on these uh, depressions to hold water and then slowly infiltrate because our infiltration rate is just gonna be lower. And compared to the or the no-till where you've got all this nice aggregation, I mean, water can move through this. It's You can see it, I hope, in the camera. And so we can get rain, it goes into the soil. Two inches may not even create a lot of runoff in this cultivated field, particularly because we have a standing wheat crop. But say we get two inches tomorrow on top of that mud, then that two inches is gonna run into the ditch. Whereas we've still got lots of capacity to take on more water. And that, that, that's the, the very interesting thing about it is once you create mud, mud's not gonna take much more water. But this nice soil structure, it's, it's gonna take water until the entire profile is full. And so that we're standing on a concrete silt loam, this soil 
if it's completely dried out, you could re it would require up to in excess of eight inches of water to fill it back up. Whereas that, this soil is still going to require that same eight inches, but if you get all that eight inches inside of a week, a great deal of that's going to run off. What a great explanation. Jason Warren, thanks a lot.